This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by. Get the most out of your hosting account, improve user experience, and make the WP admin fly. My name is Benjamin Cool, and I am the application optimizer at A2 Hosting. I have my master's in computer science, a concentration in artificial intelligence, and I'm the developer of A2 Optimized WP. You can follow me at Benjamin Cool. So why would you worry about speed? Faster sites have higher conversion rates. Faster sites are ranked higher in Google. Faster admin page loads increase productivity. Faster page loads improve the user experience. Faster page loads use less system resources. All right, hosting. My host says I need a VPS. Do I need to pay more to keep my site up? Not necessarily. You can still optimize for performance to keep your host happy. Optimized sites use less processor time. Optimized sites use less disk IO. And processors on shared hosting can generally be faster than a VPS. So when is it time to move off of shared hosting? When you have multiple simultaneous page views, bursts of traffic every once in a while with lots of page views at the same time, large databases that just don't mesh with shared hosting, custom server settings that are necessary to run your site, or you need a greater feeling of stability on your hosting account. So dedicated versus VPS for performance. Dedicated servers will win hands down every time. Low volume sites should choose faster processors over more cores. Higher volume sites should choose more cores over faster processors to allow for more simultaneous visitors at once to not crash the machine. The least expensive dedicated server will generally outperform the most expensive VPS, no matter where you go. So let's talk about using a CDN versus accessing the server directly. So a content delivery network can improve speeds sometimes. For a local audience, if your website is serving, let's say, your local restaurant, most of your visitors are going to be coming from a generalized area. You choose servers closer to your audience. You don't need a CDN that makes it faster around the world. For a distributed audience, CDNs can help, especially internationally. If you have an international audience in multiple countries, you can use a content delivery network to put in front of your site to serve up pages from a closer location than your server's actual hosted location. Let's talk about WordPress performance. We've got to start off by choosing the right plugins. You're not going to have a fast site unless you have carefully selected the plugins that you're running. Plugins should only perform the tasks that you need. You don't need plugins that do a hundred different things if you're only using three things that that plugin does. So no one size fits all plugins. The more hooks and code that a plugin has, the longer processing time that plugin is going to have when you're running your site. And don't use plugins that log to the database for security reasons. Anytime you're logging hits on your site or number of login attempts, this can just fill up a database and make it much slower. And every once in a while, run the P3 Plugin Performance Profiler just to check to see what plugins you're running are bogging down the speed of your site versus other plugins that might be an alternative. And that's a plugin in the repository, P3. We're going to talk about caching for a little bit, or the rest of this talk, basically. <laughs> Use caching plugins. A uh, great plugin uh, made by a Bostonian, W3 Total Cache. WP Super Cache and WP Fastest Cache are all three great caching plugins that you can use to speed up your site. But don't use all three of these at once. <laughs> One of these plugins is not like the others, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So we're going to talk about full page cache using PHP file caching. So this is what happens when you're not using custom permalinks. So if you have 
question your mark p equals whatever in your URLs, this is the type of file caching that you're using. So it's going to run the PHP engine every time you visit a page. It's going to be slow, and it still has to run all of the plugins every time you hit the site before it's going to return a page. Full page cache using URL rewrites is the caching system that you want to use for performance. It's very fast, requires custom permalinks, so you can't have the question mark P equals in your URLs. In W3 Total Cache, you can use disk enhanced mode to get this done. In WP Super Cache, using URL rewrites has to be selected, and then you have to actually click the button to save the HD access file. And WP Fastest Cache does this by default. Object caching. So an object in WordPress is a commonly used thing, like a menu or a widget. WP Core Caching System automatically caches these things in the file system, but it uses a, a, a caching system that's kind of safe. It doesn't cache everything. W3 Total Cache has the ability to have memcached D support. Redis Object Cache will store them in Redis. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Database Query Caching. So once you've done Object Caching, you can do Database Query Caching on top of that. Store results of database queries to reuse later. So frequently used queries get used over and over and over again. You don't have to hit the database every single time. Store it somewhere, and if you're accessing the same query five times in the same request, you only actually have to do that query once, and then it will use the cache result every time you access it afterwards. Uh, so it'll save database calls over time. And this is sort of included in the WP Core Caching system. Not very well implemented, though. W3 Total Cache, again, is one of the only plugins that is going to give you database caching and uh, the ability to uh, control that. JavaScript and CSS caching. This is very important for the user experience. So. We're going to combine and compress JavaScript and CSS files so you're not, first you're gzipping it, and then after combining multiple files together in some cases so that they don't have to download nearly as much content, and then it can be uncompressed at the browser side. W3 Total Cache does this, WP Fastest Cache does this, and better WordPress Minify also does this. Now we're going to talk about using RAM to speed up WordPress. This is where we're going to see improvements in the WP admin side. So what is RAM? Random access memory is commonly called memory. It's faster than your hard drive, but it's very volatile storage. So you don't want to store you know, uh, um, your entire site in this unless you've got a large system around that to make sure that it can handle a reboot on the server. Storing cache in RAM. So why would you do this? It improves the speed of the WP admin. You can do this in memcached, in Redis, or use APC, alternative PHP cache, which is available on PHP 5.4 or less. So if you're using 5.5 or above, that's not a method that you would want to use. W3 Total Cache is one of the only systems that you can do this, and Redis Object Cache also you can do the same. We're going to store cache in RAM now. So crazier ideas for performance. Use Linux file system, so tempfs or ramfs. So you can mount the WP content slash cache directory on a tempfs file system. You're only going to be able to do this if you have a DPS or a dedicated server with root access. Uh, and I'm not going to go into this. I have another talk on putting your whole WordPress site in RAM. But I figured for this audience, you guys probably don't want to hear about that. <laughs> even, your, even crazier, mount the entire site in TempFS. Crazier still, use SQLite to mount it in TempFS. So instead of using MySQL, you could use SQLite as your database engine, and you could put the whole thing in RAM. Uh, this is not great for production. It's sort of a, an experiment that we're working with. PHP opcode caching. The 
opcode caching is done when, after you've compiled your PHP, every time you hit a page for PHP, you, it's got to go through inter the interpreter, it compiles it into an opcode, which is executable code, and uh, it stores the executable code in memory when using an opcode cache. So you don't have to recompile it every single time you hit the page. Uh, used for this, alternative PHP cache for 5.4 and lower, and Zend op cache for 5.5 and above. And it's actually built into PHP 5.5 and above. So if you're using PHP 5, it should have Zend op cache built in, which is much faster. So good reason to go up in versions of PHP that you're using is for speed. So this can save about 100 milliseconds per page load. Doesn't sound like much. It's a tenth of a second. But when you're talking about you could have multiple page loads in a second on a server, when you're talking about saving processing time, this really comes into play. Browser caching. You want to make sure that the browser is storing persistent files. So static files like CSS and JavaScript, you want to make sure that these files are being stored in the browser. So the browser isn't, the user's browser is not requesting this over and over and over again from your website, and you're not uploading that content to the user every single time they load a page. So you want to do it for CSS, JavaScript, or files that never or infrequently get changed. Uh, WP Total Cache has an option to do this in. WP Fastest Cache has an option to do this in. And, or you can just add a couple lines in HT Access that look like this. So expires by type, text CSS, that's the MIME type for CSS. It's going to say it's going to expire in a year after they access it. So their browser should store that for up to a year until they clear their cache or a year expires. Now I'm going to talk about web servers that you would like to choose. What's, what's the difference between the different web servers that are out there? Generally, people are using Apache. If you're on shared hosting, most likely, most likely using Apache. Uh, some places are, are using Nginx. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But Apache is most used. It's generally slow. Uh, but you can disable some unused modules to speed it up. Again, this is only going to be if you have root access on a BPS or on a dedicated server that you're going to be able to speed up Apache. Um, and you can remove the .ht access files from the entire setup by writing rules into your main config files in Apache and compiling them in instead of it asking the HT access file, well, what are the rules for that directory that we're hitting every single time you load a page? And to, to accomplish turning off HD access, allow overrides needs to be turned up to none instead of all or whatever the web host has set it to. Nginx is an alternative web server to Apache. Uh, it's becoming very popular for WordPress development, but it's not quite compatible. It's faster, requires a lot more knowledge to set up and configure. Um, it compiles rewrite rules and directives every time you restart the server. Um, and you can use it in conjunction with a PHP FPM, so that's fast Perl modules for PHP, a much faster way of accessing the PHP engine than standard CGI PHP, which usually you use in Apache. Lightspeed server is a server that's becoming a little bit more popular. We use it at A2 Hosting for our turbo packages. And it's faster still over Nginx. It's a drop-in replacement for Apache, so it doesn't require any extra configuration. It still does HT access files, but it compiles in the HT access files every time the HT access file is edited instead of needing to restart the server to compile those in. It has its own faster version of PHP, even faster than Nginx's uh, PHP FPM. And it serves up static files faster than any other web server out there. And it has a built-in page caching system. So you can turn on Lightspeed Cache and say, cache files that look like this for a day. And it will store those actually in RAM uh, while they're being, uh, until they expire. So in recap, you want Faster sites are better. Choose your plugins wisely. 
it, admit when it's time to upgrade your server, <laughs> use full page caching, use object caching, use database caching, compress CSS and JavaScript files, enable browser caching, use RAM when it's available, and optimize your web server. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Does anybody have any questions? Jonathan. Uh, <clears throat> choose plugins wisely. Could you be a little more specific about what to avoid in particular? Uh, I can name a few plugins that we're not so fond of over here. Yes, um, that's exactly Word right. Fence is one of our least favorite, unless you have turned off logging to the database. Word fence is generally fine unless you've turned off logging to the database. Uh, when it logs to the database, it could be entering thousands of lines a day into the database, uh, even for a, a low traffic website. Every time Google hits the site, it might be logging something to the database. Um, so you don't want to rely on server logs for your security because this could really slow down your site every time it accesses the database, it might have to read through a really long list of IP addresses that you're looking to see if you banned. Um, not, not exactly the best way to do it. Uh, as well as, uh, I used to say Jetpack was a really bad one, but they've actually improved the speed of that because it had 40, I think it has 36 different modules inside of it. If you have all of those turned on, it's probably going to be slow. Uh, Ironically enough, W3 Total Cache is one of the slowest plugins out there. So if you haven't turned on all of the caching systems in it, it will really slow down your WP admin. Um, so you need to be using the memcache D or object cache, database cache, every single type of cache in it, or it's going to slow down your site. Um, P3 Profiler that actually checks to see if your plugins are fast or slow ends up slowing down your site if you leave it on. So you actually want to delete that plugin when you're done using it and reinstall it and enable it when you want to use it again. Um, let's see. Calendar webs, uh, calendar plugins. Very often calendar plugins will let Google crawl them uh, out to infinite dates and I will see databases full of, or caching systems full of pages cached, um, and it fills up the hard drive or it'll fill up all the memory that they have allocated for caching. So if you pick a calendar plugin, make sure that it has an end date that people can't just keep clicking links to go out forever because bots will actually follow those. Um, is there a website or a database that ranks uh, different plugins in speed? That's for plugins you don't have any second cache problems. Did you catch that? Sorry. Couldn't hear the question. The question was Is there a website where you can see performance around various plugins so that you can choose? If you're, for example, deciding between two options, how would you be able to tell which one is faster without manually installing it and testing it yourself? You know, I do not know of a ranking site for performance on plugins. That's actually a really good idea for a website. Uh, yet, installing them and running them yourself is probably the only way that you're going to find out, especially because sometimes some plugins working together will make it slower. Um, so it's actually your whole setup you have to be testing for speed. There are tools like New Relic and GT Metrics that will run performance on your PHP and tell you what exact parts of plugins are slow or database queries that are slow. Um, New Relic 
you install on the server and then you log into New Relic and it will tell you in the last 24 hours these database queries were really, really slow. These functions that were called were really, really slow. And you can actually then, if you're a dev, look at the functions to see if they're necessary or when they're being called or hire a dev to um, improve the speed of that, especially in your team. All of them. <laughs> so uh, with some of them are, are done well. If they are caching the results, so it's not calling data every time, I, I don't know exactly which ones uh, do this, but some will call into the database and try to uh, do the query every single time on a page to see what uh, related posts or um, things that it should load in. Um, so, yeah, was it, did you say related posts or custom post types? Custom post types. Oh, custom post types. Oh, sorry, I, I just heard that. So not custom post types, related post types would be bad. Custom post types are fine. Okay. Uh, uh, specifically pods, have you done any performance testing with a site with pods? I have not. Image compression plugins. Oh yes, I like EWWW Image Optimizer. Um, Smush it is another one that's out there, but that makes remote calls to their service and then sends the file back. Um, EWWW will actually just do it right on the server, and most hosts should have all the libraries required for that to run properly. I was getting into an argument with some developers recently um, who are advocating against any of the uh, plugins that you described for caching and instead they were recommending, particularly on Nginx hosts, using PHP FDM with micro caching. Um, do you have any thoughts about like whether that would be, in your experience, better or worse than a particular caching plugin? So you're talking about using caching in Nginx over within WordPress. Um, Generally, that is going to be, on an Nginx server, that's going to be uh, fairly quick to use the Nginx caching system. However, I, in all of my tests, if you're using a static file cache, there's nothing faster. Uh, you're talking about 25 milliseconds on the server to get in and out to do a static file cache. You're not going to get much faster than that. Uh, I've seen as quick as 19 milliseconds to return a static file on light speed. Um, Nginx in the 20 millisecond, it's, you're, you're really, really scratching at, uh, you're nitpicking at that point when you're trying to talk about a couple milliseconds per page load, but if you have millions of requests a day, certainly you're going to need to do whatever is the fastest. Um, the easiest setup is to use plugins, uh, but even for WordPress, there's Lightspeed built-in caching. And I don't recommend using the light speed caching, which is on the server, compared to W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache, because it treats static files the same way on the server. It doesn't spawn up a worker process. It just says, oh, that's a static file. I'll serve it up. And it skips a few milliseconds not in, in spawning up a worker process to do it, because there's no security risk in serving up a static file. Any other questions? Any questions we forgot to ask? <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Ben. Sorry for all the confusion getting started there. Oh, that's, that's perfectly fine. I, uh, I uh, enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for having me, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks, Ben. Bye.